Do you want to win these beautiful John Lobb War Casuals? If so, enter the sweepstakes by clicking the link in the top right hand corner of this video or in the video description. I'm going to be giving away these beautiful shoes that have gone through our complete Kirby Allison certified shoe restoration program, restored to better than new condition with the beautiful GR Rindenbach oak bark tanned leather outsole and a full saphir shoe shine uh, with the mirror shine on the toe and the heel. These are a size 8.5E or a standard US 9. So if you want to win these beautiful shoes, click the link and enter. In today's video, we're going to completely restore a pair of John Lobb Work loafers and give them away to one of our viewers. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love helping the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. Join me as we explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Today we received a really exciting pair of shoes in the mail today, a pair of John Lobb work loafers. These were actually given to us or donated by one of our YouTube viewers who've seen the work that we've done through our $50 eBay challenge. Knew this shoe would be over $1,800 and he found it at a thrift store in New York uh, for less than $75. Seeing our work on our YouTube channel, he thought it'd be a great shoe to use in our Kirby Allison shoe restoration program and then send it through our shoe shine service to show how an old pair of shoes, uh, even bought used at a thrift store, can be totally transformed into like new condition as long as they're well made. Now these are a pair of John Lobb work loafers. Now this is John Lobb Paris owned by Hermes in Northampton uh, and these are exceptionally made shoes. Uh, retailing for over $1,800, it's an expensive pair of shoes, but you can see why they cost so much in the quality of the leather and the quality of the construction. Now there's no doubt that these shoes have been well worn by their former owner, and you can see they haven't really been polished. The outsoles need to be replaced. You can see it's starting to become a little bit of spongy, uh, which is a tall tale sign uh, that the outsoles have reached the end of their lifetime. So what we're going to do is we're going to send these off to our cobbler. We'll resole these shoes with our J.R. Rindenbach oak bark tanned leather outsoles, which is the same quality that's used anew on a pair of John Lobs. Uh, and then we'll uh, sew that on, of course, with invisible channel stitching to match the beautiful work in these shoes. We'll put on new top lifts. Uh, we'll ink and dye the bottom of the outsoles to match this. Then we're going to send these shoes back and you're going to see me shine these through our shine program and totally transform them. And at the end of this, we're going to run a contest to give these shoes away to one lucky winner. So you'll remember the last time we looked at these shoes, we just received them from the individual uh, that donated them from the channel. They'd come from a thrift store. Uh, he bought them for about $50, $75. Uh, terrible condition. But what's nice about a really high quality Goodyear welted shoe like these John Lobb Warwicks is that they can be repaired. And oftentimes what wears out first on a good pair of shoes like this is the outsole. And that's what's great about a Goodyear welted pair of shoes is that they can be so easily resold. And that's where Jim McFarland comes in. So everyone will remember this was the original outsole it's pulled off, but we brought it in just so that we could show it to everyone. Uh, and um, you know, you can really see how flimsy it was. I mean, this outsole had really been worn through. Um, you know, the, the uh, uh, invisible channel stitching was starting to peel back. You could see uh, this right here. Uh, and so that's the, the tall tale sign that it's time for a shoe to be resold. So our Kirby Allison Certified Shoe Restoration Program take these shoes back to really uh, their original like new condition. And John Lobb's one of the finest shoemakers out there in the world. Uh, their ready to wear stuff is, uh, is right up there with the best shoemakers. And so this is the level and the quality standard that we really benchmark ourselves against in our Certified Shoe Restoration Program. Uh, and if you look at Jim's work, this is as good as new, if not better. So uh, beautiful inking, beautiful, nice polish, I and mean, a great job, Jim. Thank you. Uh, and what we really strive to do uh, in our Certified Shoe Restoration Program is really returning the shoe, especially a shoe like this, 
to the factory standards, right? So we use exclusively the J.R. Rindenbach oak bark tanned leather outsoles, the finest in the world, and really the same outsoles used on a new pair of John Lobs. We have the inking to match the inking of the original outsole, right? Uh, and then one of the things that's very important is replacing the heel block with a full leather, uh, solid leather heel block. Again, using exclusively that GR Rindenbach oak bark tanned leather outsole. A nice top lift, we use a combination lift with a little bit of brass tacking. Uh, and then of course, one of my favorite details is that invisible channel stitching so that you can't see uh, any of the stitching that you would, uh, you know, like on an open channel, less expensive pair of Goodyear welted shoes. And so it's these characteristics, Jim, that uh, I think in at least my mind, uh, really differentiate and separate a really high quality shoe uh, from just merely a, a, a nice shoe, right? Absolutely, yes. It's, uh, it's a beautiful shoe and it, it don't get much better than uh, when you take a shoe like this and have the opportunity to recraft it. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. We did an, an amazing job. I mean, look how beautiful this is. It's, I mean, it's as, as good as new. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm the hardest critic on myself, but I appreciate yeah. that. Well, that's why we enjoy having you do all of our work. And I think one of the things that's really unique about our program, of course, in addition to the materials we use, is the fact that you exclusively do all of our work. I mean, it's not that we send it to you and you have other people do it. No. Jim McFarland does it. Yes, I do every, every single pair. Yeah. So talk to us a little bit. I mean, this was a, a very clearly a well-worn pair of shoes. I mean, you can just see how thin this was. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, this is, you know, I mean, I guess when you look at it like this, probably looked okay, but whenever you take it off, I mean, this was past the end of its lifetime. Well, he had, he had worn it about, it's about 95% worn out. And whoever wore this was very talented because they kind of wore it out everywhere at the same time. Pretty not even. just in one spot. Yeah. yeah, so it actually makes things a little easier. Because once you wear a hole through it and then you get into the cork, then you get other issues. Yeah. But this was a nice, clean uh, yeah. recraft. You know, not too far into the toes. Yeah, Every, everything was nice and even with that yeah. shoe. So talk to us a little bit about your repair process. I mean, this was done with our highest level, the Sovereign Grade which is the high standard, it's the invisible channel stitching, the inking on the bottom, mm -hmm. the brass tacks. But talk to us a little bit about kind of, you know, what you had to do for the repair here. Well, when you have a shoe that's made like this, it's actually uh, much easier to recraft a shoe that's made this well. Because when you take the sole off and you cut the old sole off, it comes off fairly easy. It's nothing that you have to try to rip apart. Mm -hmm. When you buy a good quality shoe, they're they're much easier to, to repair and resole than than a cheaper pair. And probably fewer surprises too. Yeah, everything mm -hmm. is just straight textbook. We cut the sole off, replace the bad cork if there's bad cork, and then we, um, you know, when we put that new sole on, we want to get that same thickness. So we, we carry every thickness JR mm -hmm. makes. Yeah. And um, and then and then blind stitching, you know, that's always the um, that's that's always one of the most challenging parts because you've got to get that. Yeah, and that you do that by hand. Thing. Yeah, I, it's all done by hand. And um, you know, as uh, as time goes, we actually uh, get a, a routine down to where we're we're actually coming up with some easier ways to do it yeah. and and come out cleaner. That's yeah. what I want. When when it's done, I want it to be clean. Um, I'm, I'm not one to, to fancy up the, the bottom. I always go with the traditional, you know, clone the shoe back to its yeah. original condition. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is absolutely beautiful. Uh, and, of course, you know, the JR heels, you know, mat matching the outsole, uh, the inking, it, it's polished up. I mean, we still have some work we need to do to the uppers. We'll do that next uh, as part of our kind of full shoe shine. But uh, uh, this shoe's, you know, easily ready for another five years, if not longer. Oh, yeah. That's a great shoe. That shoe's going to last a long yeah. time. But especially, I mean, with the integrity of the outsole, because you could take a shoe like this, you know, to really any cobbler, and there's a lot of cobblers that do absolutely great work out there, but it's that quality of materials that with a shoe at this level uh, really is essential to uh, maintaining and protecting the integrity of the shoe. Uh, yes. When you have a nice shoe you love, you definitely want to seek out someone that's buying the top of the line, high quality. I mean, it's no better than having a great, great car. You want to put great tires yeah, on it. Yeah, absolutely. And good gasoline for that matter. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and that is, I mean, of course, what we offer here through our program yes. uh, is uh, the confidence in that no corners are being cut. None. And it's absolutely the best. You, I haven't seen, I haven't seen a better 
combination of higher quality products across the board from soles, nails, waxes. Well, heel blocks. I mean, that, I mean, we were the first ones to bring in the J.R. Mindenbach heel blocks, which, you know, was kind of a big deal. Yeah, it's the, uh, you know, I've been working. Seems simple, but it's like no one's had done it. No, I've been, I've been working with J.R. 16 years now, and we've never brought them over. Yeah. And they're expensive. I mean, they're, with that question, more expensive than like an Italian heel block. Um, yes. Or a Central American or South American. Yeah, right? they are. It's, it's just the highest quality yeah. you can get. Yeah. Anything about the, the heels? Because, I mean, we brought these back also just to show. Um, I guess, I mean, you know, John Lobb, of course, is using uh, JR, we know this, uh, for their heel blocks. Well, so. these are very nice heel blocks. Yeah. They, um, I mean, a lot of times people will reuse the heel blocks when they're in great shape. Um, it's not a problem. You can get a perfect fit. Um, of course, when we do your program, we, we go ahead and replace them anyway. But a, a lot of companies will use paper bases or like a cardboard yeah. type heel base, and they don't do too well, uh, especially if they get wet yeah. um, to where, you know, the JR is naturally water resistant, so yeah. you don't have any issues. Yeah. And one of the things I, I kind of loved was, you know, there's a huge, I don't know how this got here, but steel nail right in the middle of the heel. Mm -hmm. And I can't you know, even begin to think of the havoc that this must mm. have, have, have wreaked on a, a wood floor. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah, you get, get in trouble if you go on the... <laughs> yeah. And that's, I mean, that's one of the reasons that you always see brass tacks used mm -hmm. in heel blocks traditionally is mm -hmm. because it's a softer metal. Yes. It's going to wear with the leather. Yes. Uh, it's not going to poke... It's not going to poke out like this is. No, steel and, nails are, are not a good thing to put into the shoe. Um, I highly suggest to pull them out if you step on one. Yeah, great. All right, well, next we're going to uh, shine these babies up. We're going to put some shoe polish to them, uh, recondition this leather, uh, even out that finish with a little bit of a pigmented cream polish, and then put some wax to it to elevate that shine. So, I mean, you know, the bottom, the outsoles on these shoes look beautiful. Let's see what we can do to the uppers. Sounds great. Okay, so we've got the uh, new uh, J.R. Rindenbach Oak Bark Tan Leather Outsoles uh, on these beautiful John Lab Warwicks. Now it's time to uh, rejuvenate and uh, really polish up the uppers of these shoes. Now, as you can see, these shoes have been uh, pretty well neglected. We're going to do a few things here. We're going to start off with the Saphir Renovator. Uh, since we don't know how these shoes were treated uh, or how long it's been since they've been polished, I really want to make sure that we condition these uppers uh, with a really good leather conditioner. And there's uh, none better out there than our Saphir Renovator, a mink oil based, absolutely exceptional. Then uh, we are going to renew the finish of the shoe using a pigmented cream polish. Now this is uh, incredibly important uh, to have the pigments because that's what's going to even out uh, and really rejuvenate uh, the finish of the shoe. So we're going to condition and uh, then we're going to recolor. And then finally I've got some polishes here. We've got a Pat Deluxe and then a mirror gloss uh, that we'll use to, uh, to elevate the shine. So let's get started. So next I'm going to allow the renovator to dry for about three to five minutes. It's important to allow the renovator time to be absorbed into the leather. That's what's really going to hydrate and nourish this leather. 
Uh, you don't want to rush this process, uh, and you don't want to buff it until you can see that the waxes uh, that are in this uh, renovator have dried. So here you can still see some shiny spots, and so that means uh, that that renovator hasn't fully dried. So three to five minutes. Okay, so after this is dried, next we're going to buff it off. I have one of our uh, uh, Wellington pig bristle brushes here. It's going to provide some nice buffing. So let's So you can see after just one coat of the Renovateur, the leather is uh, really starting to uh, have life put back into it. I'm starting to see more of a, a shine. Uh, you can tell that it certainly looks uh, more hydrated than it was whenever we first received these. So next, uh, I'm going to use uh, a Saphir Pomodier Cream Polish. Uh, this is a pigmented polish uh, that is going to help restore the finish. Uh, now the pigment is very important, uh, especially for a pair of shoes uh, that has been well worn because you do need to put that pigment uh, back into the leather to even it out. Uh, this is a dark brown, uh, which is really a great match for this uh, particular John Lobb shoe. Uh, and so uh, let's get to work. So I'm applying with a cotton chamois, a nice kind of circular motions. And you really want to work the polish into the leather using medium to firm pressure. Uh, and if you want, you can even get some on the welt uh, because that'll help uh, provide a little bit of recoloring uh, to the welt itself. The great thing about a really high quality cream polish, uh, such as all the polishes we sell here uh, at Kirby Allison, is the fact that in addition uh, to uh, recoloring the pigments, it's also gonna do a great job uh, hydrating the leather. So you get additional nourishment uh, with each additional coat of a cream polish. Uh, and that's one of the reasons we recommend a cream polish for the primary use in shoe care is because you get that recoloring, you get that leather hydration and nourishment. Uh, and then also with the soft waxes, uh, you're gonna get a nice soft shine uh, that for most people might be completely sufficient. After you allow the polish to dry, again, you want to let those waxes dry and the leather to have as much time as possible to really absorb uh, the nutrients from the polish. You can buff off using a horsehair or pig bristle shoe shine brush. Wow, so just one coat uh, of the uh, cream polish and you can see uh, these shoes have, are really starting to light up. And the most important thing I wanna uh, point out here is just how the finish has really evened out. So some of the discoloration we had uh, just from the dry or scuffed leather has really been fully concealed here uh, with this pigmented cream polish. The other thing I love, again, about a really high quality cream polish uh, is that uh, it's got great waxes in it. They're softer waxes, so you don't have to worry about them cracking, uh, but they still will produce a nice shine. And you can see just with one coat, uh, the shoe really has a great shine to it. I mean, it's not a mirror shine, it's not a high gloss shine, uh, but it certainly uh, isn't a, a worn out, tired pair of shoes uh, that um, you know should be thrown in the dustbin. So. Uh, just a little bit of work here and already starting to look a lot better. So let's see what more we can do uh, with a little bit of uh, Pat Deluxe wax polish. Mm, 
I love the smell of this. So I'm gonna transition from using just a, a plush chamois uh, to a, a Wellington High Shine chamois now. This is a product exclusive to us, uh, made out of a really high quality cotton shirting uh, with a really high, dense, tight weave uh, that makes it perfect for the application uh, of a wax polish. So uh, I absolutely recommend this as an essential of any uh, well-appointed shoe shine kit. When it comes to wax polish, less is more. It's another great thing about the high shine chamois uh, is that it's really efficient in how it picks up the waxes. You want to use medium to firm pressure uh, because you want to work and push the wax polish, especially the waxes, into the pores of the leather. So I'm actually applying quite firm pressure right here. The more you get the waxes into the pores of the shoe, the better it's going to shine. All right, so while this uh, is drying, I'm going to work on the left shoe. Another thing that's very important about hard waxes uh, is that it actually helps protect the leather. Those hard waxes help seal the leather uh, and protect it against scuffs uh, by providing uh, kind of an intermediate barrier to really take the brunt of any type of contact. Uh, and then also against any type of light water stains. Uh, it's always nice to have a little bit of a wax uh, layer on top of the leather itself just to help protect it. So this first layer of wax polish, I'm going to buff off using uh, my shoe shine brush. And then what we're going to do is we're going to transition to just using the chamois and a little bit of mirror gloss and Pat Del to elevate that to a really high shine. Now, whenever you're buffing off a polish, you want to use fast, brisk motion because it's that friction and heat that's going to help elevate the shine. Okay, so look at this. Uh, just one application of the Pat Deluxe Wax Polish, uh, some vigorous uh, buffing with a horsehair shoe shine brush or a pig bristle shoe shine brush, uh, and we've really got a great shine on these shoes. But let's see if we can do even better with a little bit of mirror gloss. This is an absolutely fantastic product that I helped develop. Uh, it has a higher concentration of the hard waxes to really help build that foundation of hard waxes you need for a beautiful mirror shine. So it's a totally different texture than the Pat Deluxe, uh, much less wet. So let's see what we can do. I'm going to start off again applying this uh, with our High Shine chamois, and uh, let's see what we can do. So you can see this is much, much uh, drier. So the trick to the first application of the mirror gloss is to really push it into the grain. I mean, you want to stuff the pores uh, full of the waxes. That's what really produces that nice mirror shine. So I'm pushing uh, quite, quite firmly. And again, this is such a dry polish. You really have to work the chamois to get some uh, onto it. So again, I'm just applying more.
I'm focusing on the toe cap, uh, but I'm just going to run it slightly past it. Not much, but you want to blend the mirror shine. Uh, you don't want it to just have a hard kind of barrier or edge. But you certainly want to focus uh, on the cap. And the reason is, is because the toe cap is hard countered. Uh, what that means is that there's a hard piece of leather uh, placed in between the upper and the interlining uh, of the shoe to give it that uh, firm structure. And without that, uh, any type of uh, high shine would really just crack as soon as the leather flexes. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry for a little bit, then I'm going to work. So here I'm spending, you know, probably a good three, few minutes to really work this polish into the leather. Not doing any buffing yet. Okay, really especially, especially important to allow the mirror glass to dry. Uh, for what we want to do next, it's important that all those hard waxes uh, have uh, really set, they're dry, and then what we're going to do is we're going to buff with a little bit of water, a little bit of the Pack Deluxe, to take those hard waxes and shine them. Okay, so you can see that the waxes uh, have dried, and next comes for the magic. Now this is where we're going to buff those hard waxes uh, to a nice high shine. Now, this is uh, certainly a part of the process that can't be rushed. Uh, you really have to take your time. I call it the mirage. It looks like uh, you're never going to get there uh, and then it just starts to come out of the desert. So I'm taking a little bit of water. Uh, this is our high shine water dispenser. Great for just uh, dispensing a little bit of water. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your high shine chamois and just begin to buff those waxes. Now it's going to take a while for that first layer to really begin to shine. Uh, but that's okay. So, again, fast motion, medium pressure, little bit of water, and then I like to take up a little bit of Pat Deluxe again because it's got that high concentration of solvents. It's going to help melt those waxes, glissage them, and really elevate that shine. Another good trick is using cold water or ice water. The colder the water, uh, coincidentally, the better job it'll do hardening those waxes and really helping to elevate the shine. And then, of course, friction. So the more you see that shine begin to develop, again, I'm just tapping a little bit of Pat Deluxe on there, uh, but the more pressure that you want to apply. A little bit of water. It's essential to have a little bit of water. You don't want your chamois dragging across the shoe. Okay, nice shine starting to develop. You can kind of sense the point at which you're not making much additional progress. I can still see some of the pore structure, which are those small dots. Those are the pores of the leather. Uh, when you can see those, it means that you haven't fully stuffed those pores with the waxes. It's going to refract the light and prevent you from getting that really uh, high mirror shine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some more of the mirror gloss, those hard waxes, and then let those dry while I work on the other shoe. Side. So a little bit of water, high shine uh, chamois, and some Pat Deluxe. Let's see what we can do.
Final buffing is really so important. I mean, a little bit of water, a tad, tad, tad bit of Pat Deluxe, and then just some medium to firm pressure, some fast buffing, some friction, generate some heat. And it's at that point, you really begin to see those uh, waxes light up. I mean, just look how this is coming out. I mean, I'm really not even applying additional wax. I'm just merely, you know, working the waxes that's already on the shoe with that friction, the heat, the fast movement, a little bit of water, not too much, but less. It's absolutely more whenever it gets to this final stretch. All right, well, I'm going to stop there uh, for this shoe. Again, that mirage is pulling me uh, off into the desert. I'm getting lost here, really falling into that shine. Excellent shine. Let's see what we can do on uh, the other shoe. Okay, this is really coming together. Wow, look at that. So, you know, I'm always impressed, despite how many times I do this, of just how much better a pair of shoes looks with a little bit of shoe polish. You can see we used the Saphir Renovator to condition the leather. A little bit of a pomadier cream polish, a pigmented cream polish, dark brown to bring the color back. We did a coat of the Saphir Pat Deluxe wax polish to help bring up the shine of the entire pair of shoes. And then finally, the grand finale was the Saphir Mirror Gloss to bring up the high shine uh, on the toes. And uh, we did that probably in about 30, you know, max 45 minutes. So uh, these shoes uh, look exceptional. And, uh, you know, to consider that uh, they were purchased uh, at a thrift store uh, for, you know, less than $75. I mean, of course, we had a, a $250 into the resole, uh, plus the polish. So, okay, let's say that we've got $300 into these shoes. Uh, new, these are $1,800 shoes uh, that have been totally restored uh, for less than $300. Uh, that, to me, is a great value. And considering that a high-quality pair of shoes like this with a great uh, full-grain, open-pore leather, uh, really the highest quality leather outsole that you can find, that J.R. Rindenbach oak bark tanned leather outsole, I mean, these things uh, could go another five to ten years before you ever have to take them back and have them resold. So for more information about our Kirby Allison Certified Shoe Restoration Program, uh, take a look at KirbyAllison.com uh, under our shoe repair section. And of course, check out our full range of luxury shoe care, luxury garment care, and other accessories for the well-dressed. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love helping the well-dressed to acquire and care for their wardrobes while exploring the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Thanks for joining me. In today's video, I'm wearing my brand new a uh, triple bead stripe uh, suit from Alan Flesser. Absolutely beautiful three piece. Uh, I love this uh, bead stripe, almost has a chalk stripe effect. This is my first pinstripe suit. It has notch lapels, a waistcoat, and a high waisted pair of trousers that I'm wearing with suspenders, double forward pleats, uh, and a nice uh, inch and three quarter inch turn ups. I'm wearing one of our Kirby Allison Ancient Matter Sovereign Grade ties. You can see beautiful, uh, beautiful knots. And I love how the dark colors of this ancient matter tie uh, really work with what I'm wearing. I'm wearing a bespoke Charvet shirt, uh, of course, in my signature white, uh, a pair of our, my favorite small dot melange uh, navy dress socks, and a beautiful bespoke George Cleverly Capto Oxford.